Hello, my friends. It's Ranger Russ from the Megs Point Nature Center. Got a really special bird this morning. This is a sandhill crane. It looks like it's walking right over to me. These cranes, this is one of the larger crane species of North America. We don't have a lot of cranes in North America. This one is really not supposed to be in this area. The sandhill crane this time of year should be farther north up into uh, Canada, northern parts of the U.S. maybe. Um, they usually don't come this far east either. Usually they winter along uh, no farther east than the Mississippi. This is really unusual that it has walked right over to me. Um, and you can see it's looking for food. I'm not sure what it's going to find in this grassy area. They do go out into the marshes and look for snails and things like that that are in the marshes. Um, uh, this bird seems to want to say hi to everyone on Facebook. I am not zoomed in. This bird walked right over to me. Some of our crew were out here this morning um, picking trash and they said it was following them around while they were picking trash. So they let me know about it. That's pretty neat that this, getting this close to it. I don't know a whole lot about sandhill cranes. Again, they're not supposed to be in this area normally. Take a look at the feet. They've got really large feet. So that helps them, keeps them from sinking into the mud and the, and the marshes. Right now it's preening itself. So they're going to clean the feathers. I have talked about this on a few other bird programs. They want their feathers to be all nice and lined up. They will run their beak over their feathers. They will pick out any uh, dirt or debris that gets caught in their feathers. And this helps them, makes them fly better. When they do their wing feathers, they, their feathers sort of fit together like, almost like Velcro. Uh, holding its wing down. Notice the beautiful red on the head. That's how you can tell a sandhill crane pretty quickly. They're a little bit similar to whooping cranes, which are even more rare. They are endangered. So this is one of those teachable moments, one of those educational opportunities that I like to take advantage of. Really surprised to see it here this morning. We have had them at Hammond Asset in the past. Uh, the last one I think was about seven years ago and then there was one when I first started here so that would have been about 20 years ago. Someone's asking, Sandhill Crane endangered. I, I know that the Whooping Crane is endangered. I'm not sure about the Sandhill. Shannon says that people have them in Florida and they're used to people. They are in the yards, so this is a little bit more than used to, though, because it walked right over to me, and I would not have expected to have this bird approach me. I'm sure we'll get some birders out this this today to uh, to look for it and look at it. 
it seems very content to uh, to sit and just clean its feathers right here for me. Oh, awesome. <laughs> that was so cool. Nesting sites for these, not in Connecticut. They usually aren't in Connecticut, so. Yeah, I can't believe how un unafraid it is either. It just is absolutely amazing to me. It was on the other side of the bike path. I wasn't going to get any closer and it walked right over. Some uh, early morning bikers stopped to take a picture of it and it headed for them as well. So I'm just gonna move around here. I don't know how closely you guys can see its eyes, but it's got beautiful yellow eyes. The red spot is just amazing, that red patch on its head. So when birds get this far out of their normal range, someone's asking about how safe it will be. Uh, a lot of times a bird that gets far out of its normal range isn't able to return. Sometimes they do. Sometimes, you know, they have a direction sense and they will just, in the fall, they'll migrate and end up in their proper place for, for their southern migration and then uh, migrate back to where they should be and they're, they're in the right route. Occasionally we get a bird from Europe or um from the west coast and a lot of times they are not able to return uh, to where they're supposed to be so this is a big bird it can fly i'm gonna guess that it will be fine it will probably uh, not be here very long it should continue its its migration Someone's asking, how tall do they stand? Um, so you're looking at about a four foot bird here. If it stretched its neck out and, and really stretched out, it could be much taller, but normal height when they're in a, their S neck shape position, it's probably about four feet. Yeah, we, uh, someone's mentioning that um, we hope nobody harasses it. We will let our uh, ranger staff know about this today. And hopefully they will uh, just keep an eye on the area where the bird is to make sure people aren't, um, aren't doing too much to, uh, to annoy it. Although, if it keeps walking up to people like this, oh, nice feather ruffle there. Obviously, this bird is not stressed by people at all. Linda says she thinks it was in Brantford a week or so ago. That is very likely. Once it's in an area, it's probably going to move around a little bit on sort of a route in a direction, but not necessarily. Right, I'm going to move around to the front here. Let's see if you guys can get a look at this bird.
And I'm not even sure how to tell males from females on these cranes. Again, when you get a really unusual bird, uh, we had a bird from uh, Oregon here, and I knew nothing about it except that it looked really strange. I uh, had never seen one before. So this is pretty spectacular. I don't actually think that we have any cranes that are native to Connecticut, that this is a normal part of their range. We've got lots of egrets and lots of heron. But cranes, they're all, they're all related, but cranes are a little different. Somebody, somebody knows about the sandhill crane dance that they do. They do a very spectacular aerobatic uh, ballet for one another, um, which is pretty cool to watch. Yes, it definitely seems to be used to people. Looks like it got... I'm not sure what that is. like a little piece of popcorn something. Head scratch. You guys are getting to watch every behavior. It's done some preening, did a wing flap, did a little ruffling. Head scratch with its foot. Whatever that is, I don't think it's food because it keeps dropping the pieces that it can break off. Most of the time when we get an unusual bird like this, it's usually a male and it's usually a first year male um, that sets off to find a mate and then just keeps on going. And Or the other opportunity or option is that we see them um, from storms. They'll move in front of a storm. The wind will blow them way out of where they should normally be. Look at that dig of that hole. Look how quickly it dug that little hole right there. That's impressive. Take a look at its feet again, since it's right on top of me. It's gonna go away. So we don't get a whole lot of opportunities to get this close to any wild animal. And normally I would tell people you really need to keep your distance. This bird is walking right up to people, and I'm not the first person it walked up to, so we're really going to need to keep an eye on it, make sure that it stays safe today. I don't know if you heard that, it just did a little chatter. I'm not sure if this is a male or female. I'm not sure how to tell uh, the sandhill cranes apart or if they are even dimorphic. Um, or I think that um, there are some birders watching right now. If they could chime in and tell us if there's a way to tell males from females. I thought I saw Ned on there. Ned's a birder that used to volunteer at the Nature Center.
Yeah, that's actually, someone's talking about the trash. It may be picking at trash here and there. Um, that's actually, the crew was out here picking up the trash this morning when the bird walked right up to them. That's Dennis, where is he? He's over, he's over picking up trash now. Here, let's. Actually, Dennis is over by that dumpster that we're walking in front of here. Wonder if it's escaped from a farm. I'm not sure that um, there are any of these in any of the local, or maybe not so local, zoos. That is a possibility. Usually they clip the wings so they can't fly. Someone is reading online and it appears to be no difference between males and females. Thank you. What do they like to eat? They will eat bugs and grubs and snails and all sorts of things out of the ground, out of the mud, the marshy areas. The last one that I remember seeing here was in the marsh. Um, I'm not sure what determines where it starts to dig these holes. Whether this is just a random thing or whether they have some ability to sense what's in the ground and start to dig. All right, this is a really exciting for, morning for me. We will be, oh look, males are slightly taller than females, up to 14 pounds. Females are closer to 10 pounds and get up to five feet in height. Very cool. Someone's saying they've never seen one in Connecticut. It's very unusual here in Connecticut. Okay, so I was saying, this is a really exciting morning for me. We got to see this crane up close. Great, great exciting morning. At 11 o'clock, we're going to be doing a Purple Martin program. I have a couple of volunteers that are gonna be coming down and uh, checking out our Purple Martin boxes. So hopefully we'll get some shots inside of a Purple Martin box, maybe see some babies. Uh, and we'll learn all about Purple Martins. This is our Sand Hill Crane right here at Hammonasset Beach State Park. Really exciting, unusual uh, find, unusual bird to see here at the park. I'm sure we'll have some birders out today that will be taking a look, taking some pictures. Maybe they can tell me more about these. I'd love to learn a little bit more about the Sand Hill Cranes. It's just an unusual bird to have in the area, so that's pretty exciting. That it's here this morning. I, I really should get to work, uh, get down to the nature center, but this is so exciting. I've very rarely had a, had a wild animal ignore me as much as this one is just not paying attention to me. I had an encounter with a 
porcupine in Maine that did a similar thing. We were going the same direction on the trail and it didn't seem to care. Just popped out on the trail alongside me. All right, we're gonna let this bird continue on. If you tune in again at 11 o'clock, we'll be looking at purple martins. We'll hopefully get some up close views of the purple martin. And this is a sandhill crane here at Hammonasset Beach State Park. I hope you enjoy your day and please tune in again at 11 o'clock for our Purple Martin program. Also, if you like us and follow us on Facebook, that'll tell more of your friends how much you're enjoying it. And if you want to see all the other videos that I've done, you can visit Meg's Point Nature Center dot org or go to the Megs Point Nature Center YouTube channel. So thank you very much for tuning in this morning.